Good afternoon, everyone. ITEC India welcomes all the participants for today's NDLS session. Today's topic is counseling zero discord in couples, and the speaker is Ms. Shivranjani Kulkarni. Ms. Shivranjani Kulkarni is currently working as the senior manager with the counseling unit in the School of Vocational Education at Tata Institute of Social Sciences, that is TISS, Mumbai. She has more than two decades of experience in the field of development sector and counseling, handling large scale projects, especially in HIV AIDS and counseling. She has worked with Maharashtra State AIDS Control Society for seven years and is working with the Tata Institute of Social Sciences since the last 10 years. Ms. Kulkarni has contributed to the development of various capacity building strategies and manuals for master trainers, supportive supervisors and counselors while working on Project Saksham of TISS, which was funded by Global Fund. We welcome you, ma'am, for today's session and request you to start the session. Okay, thank you, Shweta. Uh, so good afternoon all uh, as uh, shweta told and as you all know uh, today's uh, topic for discussion is counseling zero discorded couples click on the slide and then click next okay yeah so uh, this is what we are going to cover in today's session explain the importance of counseling zero discordant couples because we say couple counseling is important we also meet the concordant couples but we will discuss why it is important to discuss the zero discordant couples uh, sorry uh, counsel the zero discordant couples we also will discuss the strategies which are required to work with couples during our counseling sessions we will also see how to assess and counsel for reducing risk of zero conversion to another partner who is non uh, who is hiv negative we also will discuss a, a guide for fertility planning for these couples and what techniques to use while counseling the zero discordant couples so in today's session we are going to cover all these points and by end of the session we can open for question and answers yeah so shweta are we yes, uh, sh should i start with the next slide or uh, just, just give me a minute ma'am uh, uh, Kiran, sir, can we quickly have the pre-test? Uh, pre right. The pre-test questions are now visible on your screen. All the participants are requested to please answer all the three questions. Uh, take your time. We have five minutes for the pre-test. So please read carefully and answer the questions. Shall I read the questions? Uh, ma'am, I'll read it. Okay. I'll read it, ma'am. A discordant couple, that is a wife is negative and husband is positive, wants to have a child. What is the first important thing the counsellor should do? The options are assess whether the couple knows the risk involved, refer to the gynecologist, discuss the safe practices or assess the husband's viral load. Second question, safe sex practices should be discussed with discordant couples who are in the age group of 50 to 60 years. Is this true? Is this false? True. Yes, if they ask any information about safe sex. No, if they are sexually not active. The third question is, if a negative partner wants to find out the infidelity of the positive partner, counsellor should respond in the following ways. First option, ask the negative partner to bring the positive partner. Encourage both partners to talk about their relationship. Ask the negative partner to trust the positive partner. Ask the negative partner to focus on his or her health. These are the three questions. Each question has four options. Please scroll through all the three questions and answer them. Requesting all the participants to please attempt the pre-poll.
Kiran sir, we can end the pre-poll now. Thank you to all the participants. Ma'am, uh, you are requested to please continue with the session. Yeah, sure. I would like to start with one case, uh, basically in ICTC at ART center, uh, like we come across many cases, which are serodiscordant, uh, where serodiscordant couples come and we have to counsel them. So this is a case, this is a scenario in ICTC, but the issues are applicable everywhere. Means really speaking, when we deal with the cases, it does not matter whether it is ICTC or ART or any other center. The, uh, obviously, the uh, clinical guidelines and everything uh, or the roles will be different, but the understanding of the case should be important in any counseling center. Uh, so this case is like this. Uh, there is a young couple who are in their early 20s, newly married. They came to ICTC. The girl was advised to get tested for HIV before one surgery. She tested positive. This was a shocking news to both of them. Their marriage was a love marriage and which was based on complete trust. During the counseling session, counselor learned that the girl had only one partner to date. That is her husband. Later on, the husband was tested for HIV and he was found negative. Another informant uh, in this uh, series of counseling sessions was the girl's mother. She reported to the counselor that she is, the mother is HIV positive and she is on HRT. She was tested for uh, HIV during her pregnancy. She had delivered at a private nursing home at her native place. When she delivered, the nevrapine was not administered and also child's HIV test was never done. However, she had hidden this fact from her children. She also had another child and she had hidden this fact. Now the girl, the client was put on ART. So all the medical uh, things were taken care of. The clinical things were taken care of. But uh, the girl, the couple used to come regularly for counseling. But however, there was a rift in the relationship. It was a love marriage. As you must have heard earlier, it was a love marriage. It was based on trust and they really wanted to have each other in their life. But now... Uh, the girl's in-laws were not ready to accept her. At the same time, the girl was not happy with her mother. All this was affecting her treatment adherence. So this entire life was changed uh, due to this one single report, her HIV status. Now her husband was negative. So now what are the key important issues in this case? Definitely there were relationship issues. The relationship between the couple and the family members there was the issue of trust. The couple's current issues uh, were like uh, trust and other important issues. Obviously, their sexual intimacy had got affected. Uh, also, we had counseled that negative partners should stay negative. In future, though they had not discussed the family planning issues, in uh, typical Indian families, definitely this issue is quite important. The uh, initiation of family and having children. Uh, there was stigma and discrimination. Obviously, as you can say, due to this uh, stigma and discrimination, mother had not disclosed her status. She had kept it like secret. And when this was disclosed, the doctor also started experiencing stigma and discrimination in her own family. This was affecting her ART adherence. So there were multiple issues in which counselor's intervention was expected or the counselor had a major role to play. Now, why we emphasize on couple counseling, not only the client's counseling? Because it enables both partners to work jointly on their issues so that they may come to a consensus for their own well-being and they can strengthen their relationship. Now, who is a serodiscordant and concordant couple? As you know, when one partner is infected by HIV and when partner is not, one partner is not infected, then we call such couple as serodiscordant couple. And the seroconcordant couple is whose uh, the couple 
where the HIV positive status is same. The status can be in seroconcordant couples, the status can be both couples, I mean, both members in the couple are positive or negative. And in serodiscordants, uh, the male can be positive or negative and vice versa, the female can be positive or she can be negative. Means any one partner is positive and any one partner is negative. Now, here one thing we need to, or we should keep in mind, though these are the common scenarios in our ART or ICTC or HIV counseling centers, we also should keep in mind that we have couples who are same-sex couples and the issues are more or less same, except the pregnancy issues. I mean, other issues like the trust in the relationship or the seroconversion or infection to another partner, safe sex practices, all these issues are same among any couple. Now, uh, the factors affecting the serodiscordance status. We all know that there are biological factors which play a major role and also there are behavioral factors which also play a major role in the HIV status of any couple or any person. Now, gender. Basically, we all know that women or girls, they are more prone to HIV infection because of their biological uh, makeup of the body. Then age and early debut. As we know, uh, even in this era, girls are getting married quite early. Many girls get married even before the age of 18 years. And also, though, though they are not married, they start having their sexual relationship in their teenage. Means many research or surveys have like supported this, that teens start with their, the teenagers start with their sexual life. Also viral load and disease stage. This also affects the uh, HIV status. Whether uh, if, the, if one partner is having high viral load, then there are high chances that the another partner, the negative partner might get affected quite early. Then the presence of STI, sexually transmitted infections. If one partner is having sexually transmitted infections, the chances of passing on the STIs as well as HIV to another partner is quite high. Uh, also, if negative partner is having STI, the partner has high chances of uh, getting HIV infection quite early. And at the same time, the negative partner also may pass on the STI to another uh, to a partner who is HIV positive. So STI also can be transferred to each other like HIV. And therefore, the combination of both will complicate, uh, complicate the uh, status of both the partners. Then male circumcision. This is a proven fact that male circumcision where the uh, four, uh, I mean, uh, skin on the uh, foreskin on the penis is removed. In some communities, this procedure is performed on a child. So if this is performed and there is like no wound on the penis, uh, like uh, the chances of getting HIV infection are quite less. But we should always keep in mind uh, that we should not like advise this to any person because uh, there are many religious practices associated with male circumcision. And therefore, one should be careful while advising uh, such things. Now, behavioral, behavioral part is sex. Uh, we all know that even one sexual act is enough to transfer HIV from one per transmit HIV from one person to another person. So if the number of sexual encounters are more, the risk is more. And also the type of sexual practices play an important role. If it is uh, pinovaginal sex or uh, sex having condom, then the uh, chances of uh, HIV transmission from one partner to another partner are quite less. But if the sex is not protected sex, or if there is like uh, anal sex or other sexual practices, which are risky sexual practices, the transmission chances are quite high. Then use of condom. There are various, I means though we say that condom use has increased quite a lot since we have launched this HIV AIDS control program in India. Uh, so if we compare from uh, that time, the early 90s or mid 90s to till date, really a lot of changes have happened and condom use is quite uh, like uh, being accepted. But still, there are many examples or there are many couples or many sexual encounters where the condom is not used. 
This is because of various reasons, and we are going to cover these reasons in the next slide. Now, the other sexual partners. If there are more than one sexual partner, the risk of transmission is high. Also, marriage. Marriage. Why uh, we have written? I have written here. Marriage is one behavioral aspect. I mean, we have listed under behavior aspect because marriage. This institution is based on trust. and it is expected that in marital relationship uh, the couple couple should be faithful to each other one is not supposed to have extramarital relationship and therefore it is considered that a condom should not be used in husband and wife in marital relationship also married marriage is uh, supposed to uh, i mean uh, people get married it is as per the traditional point of view for uh, recreation and therefore in the newly married couples they are not supposed to use condoms therefore all these factors affect whether uh, the partner who is negative will get positive or the partner will remain negative now let us discuss the issues uh, which are quite important when we deal with the uh, cases of zero discordant couples the first as we have seen in the first uh, case that trust versus dishonesty now uh, if there is uh, like um, when there is a trust in the marriage and after the zero discordant uh, or if one partner is hiv positive and another partner is hiv negative then the suspiciousness gets increased in many couples and they blame each other for the dishonesty so there is like uh, issues in their relationships there is stigma associated with hiv and that also creates lot of problems as we all know because uh, the student the person starts blaming herself or himself then they also shy away or avoid to take treatment so there are many such issues even the stigma is there in their own families they cannot disclose the status to their own family members or even their uh, like friends and other circles then always there is a risk of hiv transmission that fear is always there in the mind testing the partner also is a key issue even till date we all know this because uh, if we say the high risk population testing part the partner is issue or if we say the uh, couples the married couples even still many couples testing the partner is also an issue because uh, Uh, i mean uh, various reasons they do not want to bring the partner for hiv testing then consequences of disclosure the consequences of disclosure depend on many things how is the relationship of the couple before the hiv test is done whether there is trust in the relationship or no trust whether there is acceptance to the partner whether it is uh, like how is the understanding between the couple so there are so many things also sometimes if the girls or women if they are dependent completely dependent on their in-laws or husband for various things and if they are not financially independent then they are afraid of uh, like uh, bad con consequences of disclosure so we should understand what will be the consequences of disclosure and then counsel accordingly also disclosure to other partners if there are multiple partners this is an issue uh, because we always uh, see that usually in married couples especially if they want to have child and if they are like regular in following up with uh, the ictc or art center then uh, dis disclosure to the partner is always encouraged but someone in the couple is having extramarital relationship or a relationship with another person then disclosure to that person is hardly done we are not sure whether that disclosure is done or not done so this is also an important issue the sexual intimacy gets affected and also pregnancy related issues also get affected in discordant couples so pregnancy issue also we are going to see later in this presentation now why people fail to use condoms or why they do not want to use condoms so here are some reasons so sometimes they say that we have been having sex so far without condoms and hiv has not transmitted hiv is not transmitted 
so uh, they feel that for so many years there is no transmission of hiv and now why we should think that hiv will be transmitted so this sometimes overconfidence is there we want to have a child so this is another reason then as i said culturally marriage is based on trust and so people do not tend to use condoms means they think that we are the married couples are not supposed to use condoms then use of alcohol because your judgment gets affected when the person is under the influence of alcohol we don't have hiv so this is another thing in many icts uh, we come across such cases where they don't trust on their report they don't trust on their hiv status or they just have the confidence that we don't have hiv also one important reason for not using the condom is it reduces the sexual pleasure also relationship factors for example if a person is asking his or her partner to uh, use condom this means are we having uh, any distrust or dishonesty in the relationship if we trust each other we should not use condoms this is one important uh, thinking when where the condoms are not used sometimes people feel because if the person is infected by hiv there are no symptoms the person may think that i am not sick so why should i use condom it doesn't matter so uh, these are just examples apart from this there are various reasons where people do not want to use condoms now the role of counselor we have seen multiple issues the issues are quite complicated in a person's life when there is the status of hiv uh, when the person is hiv positive so now counselor plays an important role here basically in any counseling it is a person to i mean uh, it is counseling to a one person to a couple or to a group or any person these basic counseling skills should be used and the skills must be used that is one skill is listening listening is not just listen to the words whatever words are said but also one need to uh, like uh, listen to the underlying meaning of that thing so also catch up the non verbal cues for example if you ask how are you the person says i'm okay i'm fine but the tone of this saying okay fine the person's words are okay or fine but the tone shows you that the person is non not fine not okay so like this you should listen carefully also show empathy step in their shoes and see through their eyes through their lenses being non judgmental keep aside your own values and respect another person though in your point of view the person has made mistake think that it is a result of the person's own thinking or own situation where the person had to behave like that so one should be non judgmental and genuine if we are genuine we are confident and we can uh, i mean the another person also can sense that and whatever we say that is then accepted if whatever we are saying that is just superficial then the acceptance by the client is less because you yourself are not convinced with the things now four things uh, i just mentioned that listening should be very careful the four things a counselor should listen listen to their experiences exactly what happened why happened what was the situation when this happened what was their behavior what are their feelings emotions sentiments and what is their point of view so one should understand all these points it is very important to assess and this slide is really very important that what is the meaning of hiv positive status to the couple as i mentioned in the first slide like the girl's relationship got affected her entire life her marriage her marriage got affected due to the hiv status so find out what is the meaning of it to that person to that couple sometimes uh, i have seen many cases where partners accept each other even if one partner is hiv positive in some marriages uh, they do not break the marriage 
but they stay in the marriage very unhappily in some marriages stay in marriage but they avoid intimacy so just understand what is the meaning of hiv positive status to the couple how do they look at it what are the major emotions of each partner assess their relationship status assess the important issues like family support other support system they have their financial status so all these things all this entire uh, careful assessment will help you in better counseling also your confidence as a counselor and your positive approach it will help student if you yourself are convinced about certain things it is there are high chances that couple or the client also may get convinced about it and as i said counseling skills like empathy and active listening and all those skills should be practiced very consciously while counseling the couples now every time we cannot counsel the couples together there are many uh, situations multiple situations which we may come across when we do counseling like counselor is counseling partner number 1 then counselor is counseling separately partner number 2 then uh, like between the partners maybe you can ask them to discuss certain things they can discuss the things at home or wherever possible and then again come and discuss with the counselor so uh, between partners between counselor and couple so there are various situations where this counts couple counseling takes place now uh, what important things or what are the important strategies and skills or we should look at listen to both partners separately as well as together this is very important when we uh, like uh, discuss the partners together they might not reveal certain things or they might be like uncomfortable to talk about certain things so talk with them separately but at the same time they should be on the same page so it is better to bring them together and have a joint session with them understand their thoughts emotions point of view observe their communication pattern and feelings toward each other when you call partners as a couple in your room it is a good opportunity to see their interactions we can see many things when a couple walk in the counseling room like who is dominant who is not dominant who talks more who talks less sometimes like uh, a person i means one partner ask another pass, uh, partner to keep quiet sometimes an, uh, both partners they are keeping quiet and they find it difficult to speak about things sometimes they have fight in front of you and you can see their uh, communication patterns so uh, observation is very important when you call them together in the counseling room then we should always have a problem solving and solution focused approach why it happened why it happened to me why uh, i mean um, uh, what happened in the past so uh, there is no use of all such discussions so we should have the problem solving and solution focused approach what next what are we going to do this should be emphasized then also give them some home assignments for example if uh, if you observe that there is some lack of communication between the partners then give them some assignments to improve the communication or give them some activities to do together because many a times it happens that partners are not interacting much between them for various reasons they might be busy or other situations so give them some activities to do together as a couple for example uh, they can cook together or they can like go out together so any activity then uh, nowadays we always see that uh, like whenever we have free time we are always busy with our gadgets so unplug the devices and give more quality time to each other also focus on the present and future and not on the past and also avoid the questions about the source of the infection now these are some uh, other important things to consider in couple counseling normalize feelings uh, for example there can be blaming on each other there can be guilt feelings there can be anger there may be sadness so just say that it is natural to happen these things 
it is quite normal we see many couples here or we we see many uh, people here and everyone goes through all such emotions and experiences so normalize effectively youth silence because every time you did not talk or every time they did not talk so silence can be a time it can be for a few seconds but one can have reflection or one can think about some important thing and just be supportive focus on future and present avoid questions aimed at identifying source of infection also it is very important to express confidence in couple's ability to deal with the issues so say that uh, i mean you are not the only couple i have seen many couples where they also faced similar issues and they could find out ways to handle these problems also reframe questions that are blaming or hostile so sometimes couples blame on each other for the source of infection so reframe the questions work with intense emotions when we work with intense emotions it is important to say how to handle the negative emotions uh, for example you can say if a person is very angry then just say is this anger going to help you rather than think what is going to help you so here instead of like uh, uh, focusing on the issue which is creating anger you are bringing the person's attention back to the uh, uh, solution focused approach or problem solving approach so you can divert things like this in a constructive manner it is very important to explore the sexual life of the couple because uh, then you will be able to guide them or discuss with them about the safer sexual practices also in couples uh, in married couples or even unmarried couples usually the culture is that though the couple have the sexual act together they do not talk about sexual life or sexual acts so that discussion is very important and it is possible that the couple is uh, discussing these topics in front of you but they might not have discussed this uh, i mean between them so how often do you have sex how do often do you have sex without condom when you say sex can you tell me what you and your partner exactly do this will help you to find out whether they are engaging any high risk sexual practices or no like anal sex or do uh, you or your partner take alcohol so and there are many more questions so you can explore and assess like uh, the risk in sexual activities uh this is uh, uh, disclosure now we will uh, talk about disclosure disclosure is very important uh, to the hiv positive uh, the disclosure of sero status of an hiv positive client to his or her identified partner is very important it is more important when the partner's sero status is negative or unknown because the negative partner should stay negative and this is the aim of our program also it is important for the well being of that person of that client and so disclosure should be done the counselor needs to explain to the client why disclosure has to be done if the client agrees to the disclosure counselor needs to be supportive counselor should guide the client how to do this disclosure and also can give various tips for disclosure if the client is anxious about uh, abuse or eviction from the house the counselor needs to support and empower the client about different ways of dealing with the situation even the client is not willing to disclose the status because of various genuine reasons counselor need to remain supportive to the client do we say that disclosure should be done but there can be certain situations where disclosure may be very difficult so still counselor should be supportive to the client also when the uh, hiv positive client discuss with you uh, just try to understand exactly what are the difficulties and uh, try to give solutions or try to give answer to all the difficulties also it can be done like uh, whether do you need my support because i have seen some clients 
they requested a counselor uh, they requested for counselor's help to explain the report to their partner because in clinical language they cannot explain also what are the reasons then what is the treatment options available that the positive partner may not be able to explain to his or her partner and so it is fair to take counselor's help where uh, in this particular co context i am saying ictc counselor or art counselor or the clinician now uh, sti treatment i mean uh, all these things are very important basically safer sex practices or how we should take care when uh, the hiv uh, is not transmitted to the negative partner the guidelines are same treat the stis treat the sexually transmitted infections also art adherence is important because it will help to reduce the viral load then alternative non penetrative sexual practices are important where the chances of hiv infection is quite less also termination of a relationship in extreme situations this also might be a solution but obviously we should not advise for this but if the client if if it is the client's own choice then the client is free to take his or her own decision in this regard now uh, many couples uh, come to the counseling center when they are planning for a baby and when the hiv positive status is there there is always a dilemma whether to have a baby or not to have a baby as we all know like uh, conception is important in marriage relationships for many reasons it is uh, like a couple wants to have a baby they they can strengthen their own relationship or it is their mutual joy sometimes it is a social expectation there is expectation from the family member so there are various reasons uh, also many reasons like uh, for example uh, uh, like a woman who is having child or children she has some status in the community she has some status in the society and same with the man and therefore also people want to have a baby but when the uh, i mean hiv status is positive of any partner there is dilemma and we need to guide them carefully now what are the like uh, possibilities to have pregnancy when one partner is hiv positive so basically uh, one should understand why a, i mean what is the need of the couple why the couple want to have children so that also we should understand so that you uh, you will be able to know their feelings behind that you will be able to know their thoughts behind that and now various uh, like strategies can be advised usually in our counseling center the low technology or inexpensive strategies are discussed commonly uh, the first and important thing is screening for the treatment of sti both the partners should have good health and the sti should be treated if they are planning for pregnancy then better to delay it until the viral load of the positive partner is controlled then have sexual encounters for limited time because every time if they start having unprotected sexual encounters then there are high chances of infecting the negative partner so sexual encounters should be planned for limited time high technology or expensive techniques also can be uh, i mean discussed but usually these techniques are like you can give the information but it is up to the couple whether they want to go ahead for it or no but usually the low technology or inexpensive techniques are discussed in de detail in our counseling centers risk to unborn child mother or partner just one minute uh, i'm having some uh, issue here 
participants are requested to kindly bear with us. Uh, Ma'am, you want me to share the screen? Yeah, it's visible, ma'am. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, please uh, switch to full screen mode. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, there was some internet issue. Okay. Yeah, so while planning the pregnancy, one should like uh, uh, cover these points in counseling. Like there is always risk to the unborn child, mother and the partner. Uh, because as we all know that HIV is transmitted from mother to the child. So the risk to the unborn, part, unborn child should be discussed. Then risk reduction options also should be discussed with the couple. Uh, they should be given the idea that there are chances of lowering fertility because when we ask them to uh, like have encounters for limited uh, time or if they are having ART, uh, especially if, if we are asking them to have a protected sex at most of the time and uh, unprotected sex, obviously for quite uh, limited time, then there are chances of lowering fertility. So this also we should discuss with them. Uh, wait until infected partner is on ART with undetectable viral load. Genital examination and treatment. This is important for STI and uh, like uh, having no infections. And benefits of sharing plan with the provider, service providers or the doctors, counselors. This is very important because then they will be able to guide the couple accordingly. Now we are going to see some situations where the couple has come with uh, some problem or they, they want to discuss some issue with you. So how will be your reaction as counselor? For example, I have just given a situation here. Negative husband of a positive woman says to the counselor, when do you think my wife got infected by HIV? Because People always want to know the source of infection and why my partner is infected when I am not infected. So what might be the client's thoughts? Because the client is not sharing his or her thoughts or emotions. But as a counselor, you need to like guess what are his thoughts and emotions. So the client's thoughts may be, she was infected when I got married. She was cheating on me. She must be having a boyfriend. And uh, the, con the emotions are confused, upset, betrayed, angry, sad, worried. There might be multiple emotions. So what the counselor should respond? Counselor should, should not encourage the discussion on these questions. But at the same time, counselor should listen carefully, normalize the feeling, say that like uh, everyone goes through all such feelings and it is quite natural to experience such feelings and deflect the question that is targeted at the source of infection. So listen carefully and say that now it is better to think about the future. Let us try to stabilize your wife's health first. So divert the, I mean the, divert the conversation to the current issues and the future issues. But at the same time, don't show that you are avoiding uh, the questions or you are like, uh, uh, not interested knowing the person's emotions. Show the full understanding about the emotions. Then the person will listen to you. Then the wives or then the husband will listen to you. Another situation is positive husband of a negative woman says to the counselor, I do not want to use a condom because I do not feel I am doing sex if I wear it. We are a married couple and we should not use it. Now the client might be thinking, why me? Why I got this infection? 
This means I won't be able to enjoy sex without a condom. Why the barrier between us? It is just impossible to use a condom for the entire life. The person must be experiencing grief, sadness, disappointment and anger. Now, what the counsellor should say? Counsellor should allow the client to speak and listen calmly and attentively, normalize feelings and appreciate that it may be difficult initially to you make use of the condom, but many people can do this because in the counselling centre, we come across many people and initially they also were having the difficulties, but now they have started using it. Discuss what is the long-term goal of your life. If you are healthy, then you can achieve your long-term goals. But if you are not healthy, it won't be possible for you to like achieve your life goals. So your, you and your wife's fitness is important. Though you feel difficult, it is not impossible. Say this as well. Also keep small targets initially. Because when you say for your entire life, you won't be able to do this thing or that thing, then people find it difficult. But you can say that though it is true that entire life, but still we can start small. We can say that in this entire month, you will make use of a condom. So like this, you can uh, negotiate or you can give them the achievable uh, things or you can guide them appropriately. That was from my side. So maybe uh, like we can have question and answers. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, we'll quickly run through the posters and then open up for question answers. Sure. Right. Uh, Kiran, sir, can we have the posters, please? Thank you. The posters uh, questions are now visible on your screen. You're requested to please scroll through all the three questions and answer them. Requesting all the participants to please answer the post test questions. All the participants are requested to please answer the post test questions. The poll is visible on your screen. Kiran sir, we can end the e-poll now. Thank you.
the session is now open for question answers. You can either unmute your mic or you can even type in the chat box. Ma'am, we have two questions in the chat box. Okay. I'll just read them out. Okay. One is the one or what are the legal issues in disclosing the HIV status of the patient to his sexual partners? What are the legal okay. issues in disclosing the HIV status of patients to his sexual partners? Uh, basically, uh, uh, one is supposed to uh, disclose the HIV status to the sexual partner, but we need to do this. I mean, the AR, the counselor or the clinician can do this with the client's consent. But basically, we advise that this, this should be done by the client himself or herself. And if the client requires any help in that, we can provide that help. Because uh, there are many consequences of disclosure. And as uh, the staff in uh, counseling centers, we can be any staff like uh, counselor, doctor, staff nurse, we do not have any control on the consequences. So uh, though it is advisable that the status is disclosed, uh, we should do this by the consent of the client. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next question. What's your opinion on having sexual contact during safe period to have a baby if the HIV partner's viral load is not to, you know, not to be detected? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, uh, they can have the sexual contact during the safe period, but they should discuss this with their gynecologist and plan accordingly. Because though they are having it, uh, I mean, during the uh, safe period, so-called, uh, I mean, there are still chances of HIV infection. Means we cannot rule out those chances. And uh, there are many other conditions uh, which are applied. And it is always better to discuss. The couple should discuss with the gynecologist. Uh, Mahavir, sir, uh, your question is not very clear. Uh, what you mean is discordant couples don't use safe sex practices and even after test, they come negative. Is that correct? Mahavir, sir, you will ask your question, sir, please. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Madam, what is it? One time, the test is negative. But then, after six months, the test is also negative. The test is also negative. Test to discard and couples. Uh, Sorry, I didn't understand. They have not used the same sex. Uh, you mean, you have to say that 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 you have to have discussed, if there is no presence of STI, STI ka agar presence hai to, uh, risk mm -hmm. badhata hai. Okay. Haan. Then, um, viral load agar zyada hai, to risk badhata mm -hmm. hai. So, there are many conditions on which uh, it depends. Uh, I mean, transmission hoga ke nahi hai, many conditions ke upar depend hai. Or basically, uh, person ka health hai, or some persons are more prone to any infection. It happens, no, like uh, you take the example of any infection. Uh, for example, in corona epidemic as well, uh, uh, many people who were like, uh, they were exposed to coronavirus, still they were not getting infected by the virus. But there were some people who very like, uh, for a small time, they got exposed and they got infected. So it depends from person to person whether the person will get infected or no. But when, uh, like when we work in the counseling centers or, uh, uh, I mean, ART centers, we should always advise for uh, safe practices, safe sex practices, because we don't know uh, what will happen to uh, that particular person who is sitting in front of us. Right. Uh, Ma'am, there's one question again in continuation about the consent part. Uh, how does it impact the healthcare providers? 
So in case there's no consent given by the patient, what are the legal issues in disclosing the status directly to the sexual partner by the healthcare provider? Uh, see, if, uh, if the client has not given the permission, then uh, the healthcare provider does not have any right to go and uh, tell the status to the partner. Because uh, again, consent is also an legal issue. But whatever happened, means for example, if the client is not given the consent for disclosure, you should counsel and you should keep everything documented so that then you also are like uh, uh, maintaining your own interest. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, I'll just share my screen for the post-test answers. Sure. Oh, is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. So answer to the first question or discordant couple, that is wife is negative and husband is positive, wants to have a child. What is the first important thing the counselor should do? The answer is he should assess whether the couple knows the risk involved. Second question, safe sex practices should be discussed with discordant couples who are in the age group of 50 to 60 years. Yes, that's true. If a negative partner wants to find out the infidelity of the positive partner, counselor, counselor should respond in the following way. The answer is ask the negative partner to focus on his or her, her own health and discuss the importance of staying negative. Well, any more questions from the participants? Please feel free to unmute your mic or you can also type in the chat box. Ma'am, I don't think there are any questions. Okay, so thank, thank you, you so all. Much. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you so much, ma'am, for facilitating this session. And thank you to all the participants for patient listening. Uh, if both partners and can, oh, sorry, there's one more question coming up. If okay. both partners are uh, a viral load not detected, can we can they have safe sex? They Can we suggest unsafe sex? So that's without condom then. Sorry, I. Oh, uh, if, if both, both partners, partners uh, the viral load is uh, not to be detected, can we suggest unsafe sex? Uh, no, unsafe sex we cannot suggest in any condition because uh, uh, when viral load is not detected for whatever reason, we should always advise for safe sex. And especially uh, like uh, if one person has come in the ART center. Uh, this means one partner is positive and we do not know the status of another person. So definitely they should take care irrespective of the viral load. Thank you, ma'am. Any more questions from the participants? We can still uh, remain here for two minutes. Um, uh, yes, uh, Pandavi, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, regarding this consult, uh, regarding this uh, okay. disclosure, uh -huh. so in 2017 act it was mentioned it is mentioned that uh, it is different from male and female client sorry it is different from male and female okay means exactly what is the point i didn't get okay, like, uh, dis disclosure of a client like uh, hiv status to the partner uh -huh. so it is different from male to female so what they said is what you said is uh, correct ma'am that is uh, we have to motivate them to disclose yes if a uh, male is uh, a positive mm -hmm. and if a female is uh, negative mm -hmm. then firstly we have to encourage them then later like if they are not agreed then we can uh, tell to the like if we can disclose to the female as she is in the uh, risk uh -huh. means uh, whenever a disclosure is there uh, by the counselor, it should be with consent. Because I have seen in some ARTs, uh, some in some ART or in some ICTC centers yes. that uh, couples ask for counselor's help yes. because counselors can explain the things better to the partner. That's what they feel. And they have developed that trust in the counselor or with the doctor. And uh, if they request for help, then definitely the counselor should offer help. But if the partner is saying that, no, I myself will go and disclose, then that will be better. 
so basically we should encourage yes uh, the disclosure between them means positive partner should disclose to his or her partner about the status but if they want support the counselor or doctor should give that support any more questions please feel free to unmute your mic there is one question i heard that since considering the life threatening infection to sexual partner we can counsel to serious of counseling we can disclose status to sexual partner sorry i didn't get it uh, uh, dr swami can you please explain hello hello yes yeah yeah, yeah. because i heard that in some of the sessions in one of the state level meetings so considering the life threatening infection they say we can still disclose status to the sexual partner yeah see actually uh, uh, like there are two legal issues here basically one is consent and hmm. another is uh, confidentiality okay so and also another person's right to live so there are multiple legal issues are involved here so in ideal situation uh, basically the negative partner has the entire right to stay negative and should not get the infection so that okay. is that person's right okay but uh, since there are many consequences of disclosing this uh, thing on a person's life especially in case of women where they are uh, in case they are dependent on their family uh, for various things and especially they are financially dependent there are cases that they were thrown out of the homes and there is always that risk is involved so while considering all those risk we should not i mean as counselors we should not like uh, uh, against that client's wish we should not go and disclose it yeah so i know means i know this discussion because uh, yeah yeah because the they say even they because they don't give even, consent also we can still yeah. disclose it considering the life threatening mm -hmm. infection to the sexual partner yes mm -hmm. and also as per this uh, uh, act uh, the counselor or the doctor should disclose in certain situations means uh, not the uh, entire staff of uh, art or ictc center should disclose Uh, the counselor or the doctor can disclose but also in the specific situations and uh, with consent we always say that it should be done with consent because see if whatever happens we cannot control the consequences if any violence happens not just uh, like uh, uh, the girl is thrown out of, of the house uh, sometimes it is not just limited to that sometimes violence also can happen and we cannot control all those things so my suggestion is better to advise whatever should be done and keep the things documented okay that you had given the advice for uh, disclosure but there were certain threats or the client was uncomfortable for one two three four reasons so just document it that will be better and okay. also in case of married couples we know who is the partner but many a times for example like uh, if we have other couples say couples from high risk groups then there are multiple sexual partners and we even don't know who are those partners no no i'm not asking about multiple sexual partners only for the huh. uh, married couples who are married uh, couples okay yeah yeah uh, yeah Because i can understand said, means uh, even you can not uh, give the consent also you can do the series of counseling hmm. to disclose it but if it's not going to disclose a counselor or a doctor can have it to disclose to the sexual partner yeah actually mm -hmm. uh, means uh, uh, we used to say this means even mm -hmm. uh, in many training manuals also this was yeah, written yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is that uh, see uh, legal things are there but since we are dealing with the human beings we need to take the conscious decision if we are uh, if that couple is in front of us and if we don't know the risk the involved and we do not have any control on their situation then we need to like take the proper decision as per our judgment because forceful dis uh, i mean forceful dis uh, disclosure will have a lot of negative consequences what is your final judgment whether you have to disclose or not disclose <laughs> 
See, forceful disclosure should not be there. No, not the disclosure forceful, should be with consent. Disclosure. We we'll do the series of counselling. Sorry. Until the patient is not give the consent or not agreed, then what hmm. to do? No, if the patient or if the client does not agree to disclose, then that should not be the disclosure should not be done. But definitely, we can promote the safe sex practices, and also we should uh, like uh, extend our support in disclosure. Means, we should be very careful in counseling that why is disclosure so important? And exactly what are your difficulties? So try to understand those difficulties and. uh how we can help you uh, in addressing those difficulties kabhi kabhi kya ho jata hai na sometimes uh, like uh, if the client is anxious client then in their imagination they think that this might happen that might happen so sometimes it is just their anxious temperament so that's what that's what i said first do the proper assessment in all the like uh, couple counseling cases and especially uh, uh, discordant couple counseling cases this assessment how do they understand the report how do they understand the status that is very important so means uh, i mean i think we are on the same point the things should be handled very sensitively But and theoretically sensitive. yes practically not sorry theoretically we can say it is yes but practically not not yes. practically difficult yeah mm. yeah but we have that dilemma I means uh, mm. i don't know there is no like uh, clear cut yes or no answer but definitely yes. this principle should be there that uh, i mean uh, since we do not have any control on their life or on the consequences we should not do the forceful disclosure that point is i mean that we should always keep in mind okay thank you madam thank you thank you thank you okay bye sorry we have just shoot up the period now thank you so much okay, ma'am thank you thanks all bye thank you to all the participants for patient listening we'll conclude the session now thank okay, you bye